Hello and welcome to the shop. I'm Cindy Daychuk with Queen Bee Creations. Thanks for joining me today. Um, we are going to be doing a thrift flip video today. I have a oh, big stash of items behind me all over the floor that I need to start working my way through. Some of them I have definitely thrifted with Christmas in mind. These are kind of borderline projects today. So these are the ones that there's there, there's gonna be some Christmas. They're not fully full out Christmas. Some aren't. Some are just more darker decor. It is what I grabbed. It it is the start of the thing. So anything that I could pick that didn't cause an avalanche of other items is what we're doing. Um, it, there could have been a bigger rhyme or reason than that. They're just um. I just tried to pick items that I would be finishing differently. So you get um, a, a bit of kind of insight in terms of where I'd go. So I'm opening a, a, a can of DIY clay-based paint that I sell here in the shop, queenbeecreationshome.com, um, or, you know, look for a local dealer. Um, and I'm going to start with these bookends. I think that they're kind of cute with the little birds. They look sort of like partridges to me. And so what I thought was I had recently done a video where I showed you guys how I would do a stone finish, how I'm layering different paints and creating a bit of a stone look. And I said that you could do this as much as I did it with grays so that it would be stonish, stonish, if that's a word. Um, just working on the label here. Um, I had said that you could do it with any color that you want to create interesting textural effects. And I got people going, seriously? <laughs> so we're gonna do this blue. And we're gonna do it with that kind of that stone finish, um, which means that we're gonna be layering, la layering, layering um, different colored paints. But we start with a solid base. So I am using Bohemian Blue, which is a lovely, deep, rich teal color. So the one thing about this technique is pick your darkest color and start with that. So we want to go kind of dark to light. We can add in a little bit of dark at the end if we want, um, depending upon the overall look. But generally speaking, go dark to light and then start adding back in if you want. So I'm going to get this covered. And because we're going to be doing lots of layers and I get really pretty good coverage with these these dark paints, and especially the dark, look at, I'm only gonna need one coat. It's a dark color wood to begin with, and uh, this paint has great coverage, so I'm just gonna do the one coat of this, one good solid coat, and uh, let it dry, and then we'll be able to carry on with this one. Well, I started recording and never pushed the button, so now I'm continuing painting what I told you about after. So I started recording when I thought I stopped. But with this acorn type finial project, what I am doing here is just taking Pennies from Heaven, which is a copper patina paint by DIY, and I am painting the entire thing copper to start. I'm not necessarily going to leave all of the segments copper, but I am getting the entire thing painted copper as the base. Okay, as those pieces are drying, let's continue on. So the next piece that I wanted to get started on was this little faux stack of books. So they're just um, wood. Let's get rid of the thrifted sticker here. And we're gonna do them still as a stack, but we're gonna do them as maybe, 
you know, because of the holiday season here, we'll do them as a bit of, I've got stickers sticking everywhere, um, as a bit of a stack of um, Christmas books. So to start, I'm just going to use that same white paint, that casement, and I'm going to get a couple of coats on here. So these are just going to take a little bit of time because I'm going to have to, you know, flip them and let them dry and that sort of thing. So it's kind of at the end of my day here. So I'm at least going to get one coat on to most of the sides and then leave them to dry. And then tomorrow start painting the underside and then getting some more coats on. We'll see how many it takes. White usually takes about three, um, but this is kind of raw wood and it's just kind of soaking in right away, this first coat. So I might be able to get away with two. The last thing that I'm going to do before we go, before I go home for the evening is just a quick little clean up on this piece. Now, it is like this and it has this wonderful, look at how rusty that finial is that sits up here, but you can see this is all out of alignment. I mean, it needs some work. And there are sections, can you see that yellowing? And the yellowing over here that are signs of bleed through. I'm gonna want to have this finish um, nice and rustic and I like the chippiness and, and the distressing, but what happened is that they painted it and then distressed it, but they hadn't sealed the raw wood. And what when they distressed back to that wood, it started to bleed through. So I am going to quickly spray it with a Zinzer Bullseye Shellac. Shellac is the ultimate bleed through um, specialist. And uh, so I'm going to get it sprayed. I'm doing this last because I get to spray and leave. It's a little bit stinky. I suffer migraines. I do this kind of thing at the end of my day. So I don't have to deal with the, the smell. It'll have dissipated by the time I get back here tomorrow. All right. So this has had the chance to sit overnight to seal. And you can see how much of that bleed through there is. So what I do have are a couple of little colors from Fusion and I don't need a lot. So I'm just using these little guys because why not? So this one is, turn it around, Algonquin. And all I want to do is I have Algonquin and then I have um, Victorian lace, which is kind of a creamy white. So I'm going to put the darker color on first, but I'm using a really old ratty chip brush. I don't get rid of these because when I have something that I want to do with texture, they're perfect. So I'm putting this on first and, and I'm kind of dry brushing it. You can see that I've offloaded a lot of it. This is a very slick surface now that we've got that shellac on there. So all I'm doing is taking a very little bit of paint and I'm just kind of dry brushing it over. I'm, you know, going a little heavier on this section where I had that, that bleed through and I'm just looking for kind of that uneven, uneven look because we're going to still do more layers on it, but I just want to get some of this color on. It's going to create, let me just get the underside of this. It's going to create a little bit more of a texture that my next paint layer can kind of stick to also. But we're just going to dry brush the entire surface, let this dry, and then we can come in with our next coat. While our Algonquin is drying on the birdhouse, I want to move on to start adding some more layers onto, that one's gonna be too dark. Okay, 
let's go this, onto our bookends. I'm going, what do you call these things? So what I do have now, and I'm just using paints that I have on the shelf. So I'm switching between brands, sometimes DIY, sometimes um, Fusion, depending upon what I've got. Here I have a little bit of Seaside. Now, I have the same brush that I have the Algonquin on because it doesn't matter. And what I am doing is I'm taking some of this and fairly dry brush again, right? And I am just going to start stippling this color over the whole piece. So we had only done one coat of the DIY paint of the Bohemian Blue. And for the most part, I got good coverage. But you know what? I can see some spots where I can see the original wood. But because we're going to be doing a lot of these stippled layers over top, I can just make sure all that gets covered. So I didn't really need to have two full coats. I can just make sure that I get all that stuff taken care of as I do all of my subsequent layers. So you can see that this is gonna take very little paint. In fact, that dab that I had is probably uh, more than I'm going to need. And I'm just gonna do this over all of the surface. And unlike when I was doing the stone, I'm not adding any additional texture medium to this at all. I'm just gonna be creating the look of texture with all of my paint layers. So we started out really dark and now we are slowly moving into the lighter layers. And you'll see that I kind of twist my brush around as I go, just so that I don't get just one line, right? That my stippling looks random. I don't just get one kind of patterned effect. Right. Ooh, okay. This time I have a bronze metallic from Rust-Oleum. And what I want to do is to, we've got the lovely copper top of our acorn. Now I wanna darken the rest of this. I want to distinguish between kind of that pine cone type base that's here versus that copper top. So I'm just going to kind of carefully add this over. Now, I happen to have this, so I'm letting you know that's what I'm using. You could paint this brown and then dust some gold over the top if you wanted. So, you know, don't always think that you have to go with exactly what whoever's demoing something is using. They're using what they've got. You use what you've got. All right, this is dry and you can see that I tried to avoid anything on the metal here. It's all nice and chippy. You see all those cracks and the chippiness? I'm trying to leave that intact. So what I want to do now is brighten it up a little bit. So I have my Victorian lace and I am just going to go in with a bit of that down on my, my plate. Got an old chip brush and I'm just going to dip in, do a little, again, a little bit of dry brushing on the piece. And so we can still see those base colors coming through, the browns, that, that kind of... So it's not a nice even coat. We're just getting that dry brushing happening. So it starts to brighten it up, but we get a lot of that weathered texture coming through. And that's what we're after. Okay, next color up. Um, I have a little bit of Farm Fresh which is kind of a greeny blue. 
it's a DIY color. And I'm gonna put a little bit of that same Algonquin, which is that kind of caramelly beige color. And these are the next ones I'm gonna do. So I still have the white brush that I was dry brushing. I'm okay with that. And I'm doing the two at the same time because why not? So all that I want to do is I wanna make sure that I alternate, that I rotate them around so that I'm not getting too heavy. Now I got way too heavy with the one color there. So I will just uh, make sure. I still got some of that blue over on the same paper. And I'll add it in too. But we're just gonna add in multiple colors now. So a bit of that green, a little bit of that, uh, that beige, and just make sure you turn your brush around so that you're not getting straight lines or streaks of color. Now, what I do have are two coats, just wanna make sure I don't put my elbow in that paint, two coats of that bronze on here, and I love that deeper, darker color. I did paint it on the base. Do you see how this is a little bit duller than here? Um, and then I wiped it off. So we got this wonderful mottled effect. I'm gonna do that to tone down the copper. So I'm gonna do that on the top. I'm gonna get this bronze paint on and it's gonna to wanna to seal up. So I'm not gonna to want to wait until it's all done, just in case, but I'm gonna lightly wipe it back. And this way I also get to show you the difference. So this is what I have, this is what I had. Now you could leave it like this if you wanted it that bright copper. Um, I quite like it just toned down a little bit and with some of that bronze sitting down in those details a little bit so you can see a lot of those lines in there just a little bit better. Now, what I am gonna do as well once I have the top finished, is I'm gonna reapply it to the base and then wipe it back again. So it'll be a little bit darker than this top, but it will be lighter than the acorn middle section. And then I'm gonna let this dry because it's gonna be wet top and bottom. And then I think we have one other step, but I'm gonna to wanna to let that all this paint kind of settle overnight a bit. With our little acorn now, what I want to do is just take, you know, another metallic. So I am taking a gold gilding wax by any Sloan. This is similar to like a rub and buff product. If you have that, it's a little bit more intense than the gold um, golden rule wax by DIY which is another product I have. And I'm just taking it a little bit onto my finger and just kind of roughly trying to hit those, those upper tips, those, those little, little edges of each of those little uh, pine cone, I'm gonna say petals. I don't know what you call those little individual pieces of the pine cone. Okay, there's a good question. Anybody knows, put that in. <laughs> uh, so I'm calling them petals, but you get what I'm saying, right? It's just those, those little edges so that we get some of that happening versus just the flat look. And it's just, you know what? It's just another little, little bit of zhuzhing that, you know, is just a small little touch, but kind of, to me, makes a world of difference in it. I have some really, really super thin wire that I just got from the dollar store. And I just wanna cut a couple of small little pieces. Our little house, our church, it looks like a church to me. 
I guess it's not a cross on top, it's a fleur de lis, but you know. This is done. What I'd like is I just want to give it a little bit of a Christmas shush, right? Just we're at that season. So um, what I thought that I would do is just take a little piece of this greenery and it looks sort of um, with little, little juniper berries. What is this? Juniper berries. Oh, I'm so excited that I got that right. <laughs> It's the small things, people. You know, just watch for the small things. So it's just like this little juniper berry guy. And so I'm going to cut off a couple of the branches. Maybe three. And what I want to do is see whether I can kind of wire them around. This is, this, these little branches are not wired. So... That's where I'm just wondering if I can uh, get it to actually curve. So I have these little pieces of, of dark wire that I'm going to use to kind of wire these pieces together and see if I can get them to curve to make just a little, little wreath. Now, before I wire this last piece together, I want to make sure, oh, that's a good size. I want to make sure it's the right size. After all that, it'd be awful if it was too small. And it's kind of set up to have, just trying to work around the little berry parts. <laughs> it's kind of set up to have um, pieces sticking out. Okay. Then, once I'm ready, let me face myself so I can, well, actually, let's just do it face down. We're just going to take some hot glue. Let me see which way I like this best. Okay, that way. We're just going to take some hot glue in a couple of strategic little spots. I'm going to get it glued down around the hole. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to put a can over top of it, weight this down, and uh, let that glue dry. All right, I have our little birds, and as much as I may want to do an, a little bit more to them, I do want to get them sealed at this point. We've got multiple layers on there, and so I am just taking some DIY clear wax, an old chip brush, and I am going to get these waxed. I want to get the wax just kind of on there, and then I will take a dry lint-free rag, and I will wipe them back. Now, as a final step on these, I wanna just add a little bit of that same gilding wax by Annie Sloan. So here's the difference between the two. You can just kinda of see it's a little bit light, it's a little bit subtle, but it highlights some of the details. So what I will do is I will just take my finger and go around the edges, just defining those straight edges a little bit. Then, I'm going to take a small little artist brush and I am just going to use it to just kind of highlight the details that are in the actual piece itself. So it has grooves to highlight kind of the, the wattle and the wings. And I'm just going to lightly brush this into those grooves to just kind of highlight those details a little bit. I'm, I'm not looking for them to be really colored, but just more kind of a little bit of shading, a little bit of detail, subtle, but it makes a difference. Remember our big tray we painted? I have the uh, Candy Cane Cottage, which was the new release the, in the Christmas release from IOD. So I have this big, transfer. Okay, I'll get it later. <laughs> and it does have two pages 
I mean, it's got lots of things, but it has two pages that have big sayings on them. I'm going to take the hot chocolate so that this tray is sort of like a big hot chocolate tray, right? Cookies and hot chocolate coming out. And I think, let me just look. There they are. I may use the candy canes too. I don't know. But look, like there's big Santas and there are these wonderful little rosettes. We're gonna be coming back to those. But I am thinking we might need the candy canes. But let's get this on and see. Now we had painted the inside with an all-in-one paint. So this has been sealed and these transfers love a slick or sealed surface. So, once I lay this down, okay, get that later too. Um, I just want to kind of roughly get it in place. Now I haven't pushed because I am looking to just sort of die, double check my eyeballing here. One, two. One, too, too narrow on that side. So if it hasn't stuck yet, yay. Yeah, I'm better looking down. Okay, I can live with that. I just have to do the top down thing. And we're just gonna take the little stick that comes with the transfer and we are gonna rub this on. Now I have to be a little bit careful on, on this one, not careful, but this, this tray actually has grooves on the bottom. So I am gonna have to make sure that I kind of do the highs and the lows of the transfer. But all you're gonna do is just rub over the transfer itself and I've gotta go the highs and lows, but you'll start to see kind of where it's releasing as well. You'll see it lighten up and that gives you a good idea of where it's sticking, if it's sticking, and you can kind of peel it up to be able to see. So I'm just going to keep getting this baby on. Right, I'm just in the finishing stages and I'm just kind of lifting as I'm going to just kind of make sure that it's all sticking. Yes. Get that later too. And there we go. Look how cute that is. Now, what I will do is I'm going to take, I mean, our paint is sealed, but our transfer is not. So I'm looking at this and I, I like it as it is. I don't think that it needs more. I love just that little pop of the red there with the candy cane. I think that the, the rest kind of fits with this backing, the white background help it stand out. So what I will do is now I wanna seal the transfer. So I am going to do a couple of coats of Big Top by DIY to be able to seal it in. Um, just so that, again, it's, you're not popping it in a dishwasher, but if you were using it as a physical tray, you know, hot drinks are not going to affect it, and you could just take a damp cloth to be able to clean it out. Now, our little wooden books, I've decided I'm definitely going to use them as a book stack. Rather than leaving them loose, I'm gonna do them as a book stack, and so I am actually going to glue them in place and then do my final painting with them in place so that I'm not actually painting more than I need to unnecessarily. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of hot glue, glue them down, and then uh, do one more paint job on them, and then we'll come back and finish these guys off. They're gonna be cute. All right, our books are dry and they're ready for us to apply our transfers. And what I want is this sheet 
of these lovely little Victorian looking florals. And I just want to, I'm gonna start by cutting off one of these bigger ones on the bottom. I mean, I'm saying bigger, they're not huge. And I'm going to kind of center it on the top, but have it go down over the, what do you call that? The binding, the spine. There's a word for that, that edge. <laughs> the spine of the book. And then we will look at adding more. But what I'm looking at is the, these little transfers, these particular ones, I mean, you know, you could say that they're Christmas because there's a little bit of berries in there, but they're really more kind of like a Victorian floral, um, it fits into Christmas, like that Victorian Christmas feel, but it doesn't have to be Christmas. So as much as this kind of has a bit of a Christmas feel during the Christmas season, I can kind of use them all year round for decor, should I choose. And look how easily those come off when you have done them with like that all in one. It, again, it just loves that slick surface. So look how cute already. But as much as they're stacked now, I do want them to kind of wrap. So I'm just wondering size wise. This might be enough. This next one up is still in the same color tones. These four at the top are a little bit more in reds. This has got a little bit of red, but it's more in a soft blush. So rather than doing another big one, let's do this little guy. And what I'm thinking, is I'm going to tear it. I'm going to start here and do it on this edge. Then I'm going to come down in here <laughs> and doing it on this edge. And then come down here and wrap it around the back. There we go. All right. So super cute. Now, the next step with this one is, I mean, you could just be done. You know, if you're just gonna stack it, you wanna be done. I, of course, need to zhuzh it up a little bit. Um, what I do want to do is I just want to seal this before we do it. So I am gonna take my big top once again and just, Okay, I'm just gonna give it a very light, quick coating. Get that to dry. I don't have to seal anywhere else, but I do wanna seal where my transfers are just to give them a little bit more longevity. The final little piece to our books is just to, just to give them a little bit of, you know, a little bit of ribbon and if I can, there we go. Okay. Now you could, you could tie these up, you know, like, well, you can tie them up however you want, really. I'm just gonna do like a simple, simple bow rather than, rather than doing, you know, the kind of crossover and everything. I just want, I just want a little something. Now I need another finger. I just want a little something that is going to um, zhuzh it up a little. It doesn't have to be, you know, big. So I want to do this. Just cut off the tails a little bit. 
And I'm just going to tuck a little bit of greenery in. Now, what I can do, hmm, okay, I'm tying again. <laughs> I can, there's a spot where this little pine cone is on a wire and I could tie this in place if I, if I use that wire. So what I don't wanna do, I don't wanna glue it in place. You could use some hot glue and just glue your little decoration in place, but because my little piece is very um, Christmas, because it's a little fir branch, I'm just going to tie it. Because if I decide seasonally that I wanna tie it with you know, a little bit of lace or a little bit of a pink bow. I mean, I can switch it out this way and I can just put a little little bloom there instead. But this is what we've got for it being in the Christmas season. I love it going down the side. So let's, you know what? I think that's the last one. So let's take a quick look. I mean, obviously we've got our little book stack. Now, I get that I found these little book shaped wood pieces um, but you could do the same thing with actual books. So you could look for little tiny, um, even soft cover books in the dollar store that you could stack up or certainly in the thrift stores. You could always just cut square pieces of boards and do the same thing, treat them the same. So you can just stack them up, decorate them up. And I think that just makes a really cute little shelf sitter. Um, it, it looks adorable as part of a little vignette. Um, so as part of your holiday decor, I think it's super sweet. This is not necessarily holiday specific. This is a piece of decor that could sit up on your mantle, on your credenza, up on a bookshelf all year round. If you wanted to make it a little bit more holiday specific, then you could certainly tie on a little bow of greenery with a bit of ribbon around the base. Take it off after the season. So I don't know with this in terms of thrift flips that I was actually thinking um, about them having to be holiday specific. So this is neutral, um, but you could take any of your neutral decor and just tie a little something something onto it, a little piece of greenery and you're good to go. These guys are definitely neutral, right? These are bookends. I love the little touch of gold onto them. They look kind of like faux stone in the blue tones. You guys had asked for um, seeing them done in something that was not just the gray tones. So here in the blues, you can get an idea of some of the directions that you can take them, but um, super cute. We've got our little, oh, let me reach for it. We've got our little metal tray. We've got it sealed. So it's, uh, you know, hand wipeable <laughs> as opposed to washable. We don't want to submerge it, but uh, just a cute, cute little transfer that really kind of fits onto any kind of tray, whether it's whether it's wood or galvanized. But I really like the look of kind of this galvanized tray, which again, you could use as an actual carrying tray for your hot chocolates and cookies and things, but equally so you can use it to stage, you know, with some candles and some additional greenery and some pine cones thrown in there. You could use it to stage um, a bit of a Christmas vignette on a settee or ottoman or a side table or something. The last piece that we had was this big um, kind of birdhouse that we found. And I think it's just adorable. It didn't need much. It needed a little bit of a paint job. And I love the addition of just that tiny little um, wreath hanging over there. Now, because this is done with juniper berries, it is not necessarily 
specific only to Christmas. It's not like it's holly and berries. Um, so again, this could be year round decor, but easy enough to pop off and add like a little floral wreath at some time. I, I like the addition of the wreath. I love the little rusted finial and the doorknob. Super, super cute. So again, just kind of three, four, five ideas of things that I thrifted working through my stash that will ultimately make their way into my shop. Perfect for some of your home decor. Um, awesome for some of your booths or some of your markets if you have them. And I hope really, you know, my goal with doing this is just kind of giving you some inspiration that if you are out thrifting that you're getting some ideas as you look at some of these things on the shelf that just look maybe old and tired and brown or beaten up or you know whatever happens to be the case that helps you be able to envision and see some of the potential that's out there take a look at some of your decor that's maybe looking a little old and tired and see the potential in that too i get a lot of people that come through my shop that see some of these things and have to buy them and um, I always urge them, take a look, you know, like take a look at some of your, your home decor and maybe you've got some of the pieces that you already need. I can just sell you the paint. That works too. Let me know what you think of this one, guys. Certainly I hope that you've got a, a couple, a couple of ideas anyway of things that you could make over regardless of where you happen to come across them. And I definitely, as always, look forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, take care.